Father Riley's Horse by Banjo Patterson. Twas the horse thief, Andy Regan, that was hunted like a dog by the troopers of the Upper Murray side. They had searched in every gully, they had looked in every log, but never sight or track of him they spied. Till the priest at Kylie's Crossing heard a knocking very late, and a whisper, Father Riley, come across. So his reverence in pyjamas trotted softly to the gate, and admitted Andy Regan and a horse. Now it's listen, Father Riley, to the words I've got to say, for it's close upon my death I am tonight. With the troopers hard behind me, I've been hiding all the day, in the gullies, keeping close and out of sight. But they're watching all the ranges till there's not a bird could fly, and I'm fairly worn to pieces with the strife. So I'm taking no more trouble, but I'm going home to die. Tis the only way I see to save my life. Yes, I'm making home to mothers, and I'll die, oh, Tuesday next, and be buried on the Thursday, and of course, I'm prepared to meet my penance, but with one thing I'm perplexed, and it's, Father, it's this jewel of a horse. He was never bought nor paid for, and there's not a man can swear to his owner or his breeder, but I know, that his sire was by pedantic from the old pretender mare, and his dam was close related to the row. And there's nothing in the district that can race him for a step. He could canter while they were going at their top. He's the king of all the leapers that was ever seen to leap. A five-foot fence, he'd clear it in a hop. So I'll leave him with you, father, till the dead shall rise again. Tis yourself that knows a good un, and of course, you can say he's got by moonlight out of Paddy Murphy's plain, if you're ever asked the breeding of the horse. But it's getting on to daylight and it's time to say goodbye for the stars above the east are growing pale. And I'm making home to mother and it's hard for me to die. But it's harder still is keeping out of jail. You can ride the old horse over to my grave across the dip where the wattle bloom is waving overhead. Sure he'll jump them fences easy. You must never raise the whip or he'll rush him. Now goodbye. And he had fled. So they buried Andy Regan, and they buried him to rights in the graveyard at the back of Kylie's Hill. There were five and twenty mourners who had five and twenty fights, till the very boldest fighters had their fill. There were fifty horses racing from the graveyard to the pub, and their riders flogged each other all the while, and the lashings of the liquor, and the lavings of the grub. Oh, poor Andy went to rest in proper style. Then the racers came to Kylie's with a steeplechase and all, for the folk were mostly Irish round about, and it takes an Irish rider to be fearless of a fall. They were training morning in and morning out. But they never started training till the sun was on the course, for a superstitious story kept him back, that the ghost of Andy Regan on a slashing chestnut horse had been training by the starlight on the track. And they read the nominations for the races with surprise and amusement at father's little joke. For a novice had been entered for the steeplechase and prize, and they found that it was Father Riley's moke. He was neat enough to gallop, he was strong enough to stay. But his owner's views of training were immense, for the Reverend Father Riley used to ride him every day, and he never saw a hurdle nor a fence. And the priest would join the laughter. Oh, said he, I put him in, for there's five and twenty sovereigns to be won. And the poor would find it useful if the chestnut chanced to win. And he'll maybe win when all is said and done. He had called him Forgabello, which is French for clear the course. And his colours were a vivid shade of green. All the Dooleys and O'Donnells were on Father Riley's horse. While the orange men were backing Mandarin. It was Hogan, the dog poisoner, aged man and very wise, who was camping in the race course with his swag, and who ventured the opinion, to the township's great surprise, that the race would go to Father Riley's nag. You can talk about your riders and the horses not being schooled, and the fences is terrific and the rest. When the field is fairly going, then you'll see you've all been fooled, and the chestnut horse will battle with the best. For the summer's got condition, 
and they think the race is sure, and the chestnut horse will fall beneath the weight. But the hopes of all the helpless, and the prayers of all the poor, will be running by his side to keep him straight. And it's what's the need of schooling or of working on the track when the saints are there to guide him round the course. I've prayed him over every fence. I've prayed him out and back. And I'll bet my cash on Father Riley's horse. Oh, the steeple was a caution. They were tearing round and round. And the fences rang and rattled where they struck. And there were some that cleared the water. There was more fell in and drowned. Some blamed the men and others blamed the luck. But the whips were flying freely when the field came into view, for the finish down the long green stretch of course, and in front of all the flyers, jumping like a kangaroo, came the rank outsider, Father Riley's horse. Oh, the shouting and the cheering as he rattled past the post, for he left the others standing in the straight. And the rider, well, they reckoned it was Andy Regan's ghost. And it beat him how a ghost would draw the weight. But he waited, nine stone seven. Then he laughed and disappeared, like a banshee, which is Spanish for an elf. And old Hogan muttered sagely, if it wasn't for the beard, they'd be thinking it was Andy Regan's self. And the poor of Kylie's crossing drank the health at Christmas tide of the chestnut and his rider dressed in green. There was never such a rider, not since Andy Regan died. And they wondered who on earth he could have been. But they settled it among them, for the story got about, amongst the bushmen and the people on the course, that the devil had been ordered to let Andy Regan out for the steeplechase on Father Riley's horse. <laughs>